First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 18, a very important part of the Bible. We're going to look at a very important title deed. That the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ, commanded Gad to say to David, commanded, commanded. Look at 21, verse 10. It says, go and tell David, saying, thus saith the Lord. Here it says, command. God to say that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Now, not yet has this land been established in Jerusalem yet. It's still in the hand of the Jebusites. It's a land that's in Benjamin, but given over to Judah as the capital of the city today known as Jerusalem. But when we look at the threshing floor of Ornab, where we are right now, it's in a very important spot in history. It's a very important spot in the Bible that we must look at. First Chronicles 21, First Chronicles 21, 18. We're looking at this threshing floor of Ornab. And that's where we're at, First Chronicles 21, 18. Okay. That's where, all right, that's the first beginning spot right where we are. Second Chronicles 3 1. Good place to start off where we were. Second Chronicles 3 1. And much is to be today on that threshing floor of Onan. Because if you go over Israel today and say, I'm going to go see the threshing floor of Onan. You will see the Dome of the Rock. And that area right now where the Dome of the Rock is, we're going to look at it in the Bible. The reason why the Dome of the Rock is there right now because Israel has sinned against God and has rejected the Messiah so prophesied that God is angry with them. But God's not finished with them. And we look at the, the threshing floor of Onan, we're going to see something remarkable, and yet we're going to see something yet future. We know that there's going to be another tabernacle, temple, there during the tribulation period. When it will be built, before or during the tribulation, we don't know. And it's interesting because when we look at this spot called Onan's uh, threshing floor, or Mount Moriah, or the Temple Mount, where the most holy place is, is where God met with the children of Israel, is where Jesus Christ is going to, to be in the millennium, where the priests will be doing the services of the tabernacle temple that's in the millennium. And we're going to see that that very veil was rent by Jesus Christ. And it's a place that armies have fought over millions, well not millions, but thousands of years. So 2 Chronicles 3, 1. Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah. Now get that, Mount Moriah. Because that's an important name. Where the Lord Jehovah appeared unto David, his father. Where we just read in 1 Chronicles 21, 18 is the very spot that Solomon is going to build that temple. So if David were to get into a time machine, and he won't, and he goes about uh, to BC 1012, says here, I don't know how, what correct these dates are, but let's say we go there, he would find himself in that time machine, and he would step out of and he would see just gold and darkness, except for God is light. No light in that holy, most holy place, but the priest knew where to put that blood. And he would find the altar. That he said one day, Lord God, you dwell amongst curtains. And he would be in a place now, you dwell amongst cedars as I live and gold. Right where, J right where David's going to build that altar, there is. Psalm is going to put the most holy place. When the Lord appeared unto David his father, the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Onad, the Jebusite. So there it is. He began to build the second day, the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. So, Mount Moriah is the threshing floor of Onan the Jebusite. Important information. 
Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Oh, you want to see Calvary. And yet Hebrews says Jesus Christ died without inside the gate. Jesus Christ did not die in the most holy place. Jesus Christ did not die upon that altar, the brazen altar. He didn't die in the holy place. He died outside the gates of Jerusalem. And Genesis 22, 1, he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, pictures Jesus, God and Jesus, whom thou lovest. That's the first time that word shows up, lovest. And get thee to the land of Moriah. That's the first time that word shows up. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, where I will tell thee of. Now he says, get to, get to Moriah, and he says, one of the mountains. Mount Moriah, according to what we read already, Onad's threshing floor, where Solomon meets to build that temple. Here he says, on one of the mountains. Doesn't say Moriah. And would it be interesting that the very mountain that Isaac is laid down, this story, I mean, it has three men. It has one carrying wood. It has fire, the picture of hell. Well, it has a knife, but there's no knife to sacrifice Jesus Christ. Would it be interesting one of them mountains or a hill called Calvary? And over yonder is a place where the temple mount will sit. Will be a place where the temple will sit. Will be a place where the Holy of Holies will sit, and then over there is a place where Jesus Christ was suffered and died. Because look, it says, unto a land of Moriah, and offer them there on offer them for a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I tell you thee. So you're going to Moriah where David is, but one of the other mountains. And the Bible speaks about Calvary as a hill. Would it be quite interesting that afternoon Abraham and Isaac saw where the temple would be built and were right where Jesus would have died. And yet the angel of the Lord says, no, nope, Abraham, stop. I know you love me. They found a ram caught in the thickets by his horns. Verse 13. So that's quite an interesting note. First Kings eleven thirty-six. 36. That's all we're going to look at today. We're going to look at this temple mount. We're going to look at Mount Moriah and the threshing floor. And Jerusalem. First Kings eleven thirty six. I mean, would you have th thought the place where God would meet Israel in a final place where he would settle his name? Would you think it would have been a place for threshing wheat? I don't think it would have been a place where you would have cattle going poo poo all over the ground. It's a place where they thresh. I mean, you would have animals going poo-poo. I mean, it happened. We, But it wouldn't be a place of going to poo-poo all the time. And yet, when you look at the foundation of Washington, D.C., that was farmland. There was cows and pigs and all kinds of livestock where the president, I mean, where the capital is today. Poo-poo. Caca. And yet, where the Temple Mount was, they thresh wheat. What do you do with wheat? You make it bread. Who is the bread of life? Jesus Christ. And where is the bread of life? from Bethlehem, the house of bread, where, he, where Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, where he would go into Jerusalem, they would say, crucify him, crucify him, he'd be taken to the hill as Abraham took Isaac. Very interesting. And 1 Kings eleven thirty six, the Bible says, and unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have light always before me in Jerusalem. The city which I have chosen to put my name there. So Jerusalem, where we're looking at right now, the whole main city of Jerusalem, God said, that's where my name's going to be. And he, through the children of Israel, we're going to look at, he says, where, I, <coughs> excuse me, where I'm going to put my name, one tribe, Judah, David. The sure mercy of David. 2 Samuel 5, 6. 2 Samuel 5, 6. This property that we're going to read about and study about is in the Bible. It's great, interesting. In 2 Samuel 5, 6. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land. Before, the, before Israel came in, there was the Jebusites, which spake unto David, said, Thou take the blind and the lame, 
Thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot take come in hither. You're not going to conquer us. I mean, you got to get rid of the lame people and all that for you to do it. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. There it is. The same as the city of David, Jerusalem, Zion, city of David. There it is. There's the capital. And David said on that day, whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smites the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, David shouldn't hate, he shall chief and captain. Wherefore they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about Milo and inward. David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was in him. There is the making of the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. David, the second king of Israel, the second one who's a man after God's own heart, establishes and conquers Jerusalem to make it their city. There it is. There's the foundation. Deuteronomy 12.1. Deuteronomy 12.1. Scripture with script, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In Deuteronomy, the law, 12.1. These are the statutes and judgments, which ye shall observe to do in the land of okay, Israel, which the, Lord thy, which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it. All the days ye shall live on the earth. You shall other destroy all the places wherein the nations, that's who were in the land before them, which ye shall possess, serve their God, upon high mountains, upon the hills, and under every green tree. Ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. Ye shall hew down the graven images of the gods, and destroy the names of them out of the place. To get in that land, destroy all religions. Now here's the important part. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, but unto the place, the place, which the Lord your God shall choose out of your tribes to put his name there. We just read that. That's Jerusalem, where David is. Shall choose out all the tribes, Judah, to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek thither. Thou shalt come. And thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, your sacrifices and your tithes, your heal offerings of your hands and your vows and your free offerings and your firstlings of your herds and of your flock. There's only one place they were to bring that, the brazen altar. And there shall ye eat before the Lord your God, be the most holy place, the holy place, the tabernacle, the temple. You shall rejoice in all that you put your hand into, ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God has blessed thee. So here... Get rid of all the religions of the land. But there is one specific place, Israel. I will have you be established. I will have you bring your offering. I will have you bring what you have to bring to me and have joy before me. That's in Jerusalem. That would be the temple where you bring your sacrifices. Uh, let's see where we can. Deuteronomy 26, 2. Deuteronomy 26, 2. And there was to be nowhere else after they get established. After David establishes Jerusalem, after uh, Saul, uh, Solomon builds that temple, that's it. There it is. When they put that the the altar, I mean the Ark of the uh, Covenant in the most holy place of Solomon, they pull the staves out and it sits, never to be moved again except for by God. Deuteronomy 26, verse 2. That thou shalt take of the first of thy fruit of thy earth, which shall bring to which shall bring of thy land, Israel, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall put it in a basket, and shall go unto the place. One particular place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And that's Jerusalem, that's the temple. That's what we're talking about. 2 Samuel 24. 2 Samuel 24. We'll probably look at this many times or a few times. 2 Samuel 24, verse 18. 18. We're only going to read part of this because we'll, we'll come back. 
But what we read today, Gad came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arnon, this is a different spelling, the Jebusite. And David did according to the saying and went up as the Lord commanded. So here we are. That angel commanded Gad, said, Did you go tell David, I, you make sure David gets this. Because this is going to be important. And what David establishes right there at the altar and buys this piece of land from Onan, which we'll look at later. This is the place of Judah, which is really Benjamin, but of Judah, David. That's where I'm going to put my name. David, you better get it right, because this is the place where they're going to fight over. And David would be turned in the grave to realize if you come back today and find out what's standing there right now. Because the Jews have sinned. But God ain't finished with them. Now look at Matthew 4, 5. We're going to look at some New Testament. we got some Gospels here. Matthew 4, 5. We'll run these in order. And what, what we read in Matthew 4, 5, you can also find in Luke 4, 9. Now, if you, look, if you know the story of Matthew 4 and Luke 9, this is where the devil tempts Jesus. Now, watch this. 4, 9. And says unto him, all these things, what, uh, yeah, 4, 9. All these things will I give unto thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Look at, look at the devil. He got some nerve. Having Jesus fall down and worship him. But look at verse 5, Matthew 4, 5. The devil wants Jesus to fall down and worship him. Look where he takes him. Then the devil takes him up unto a holy city. What city is that? That's Jerusalem. And setteth him on the pinnacle of the what? The temple. That very spot where we're reading right now where David's going to purchase, where David is, has established for God a name in the city of Judah, called Jerusalem. Solomon is going to build a temple and in the most holy places where David is standing right now and how many years later you're going to find Jesus and the devil sitting there on that same temple up somewhere high and the devil is going to tempt Jesus Christ on the very spot where we're studying where David was. Now isn't that the one who started all this? Didn't the Satan tempt David have him number Israel and look how many years later here it comes at that same temple at the same location where David is in, in the general area. I mean I'm not gonna say David's gonna stand right here with Jesus but there it is you got Jesus Christ in the devils right there where the temple's being built somewhere in eye shot guarantee where David is right now where Solomon is building that temple here's this great temple that, that Solomon built uh, it's destroyed it's rebuilt by Ezra and Nehemiah and it's refurnished by Herod. But this property, where the dumb of the rock is today, where Abraham offered his son, here is Satan and God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ. And look at look what it said. Then the devil takes him up to a holy city, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and says unto him, If thou be the Son of God, you get that son reference to Isaac, thy only son? Cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Is it wasn't there an angel with David? And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Run that Moriah back to God tempted Abraham. How's that for a cross reference? You haven't seen a preacher say that one, have you? And that's Genesis 2 22, verse 1, where God tempted Abraham. And Satan's tempting Jesus Christ. Hey, I'll give you all this. Just fall down and worship me. That's quite interesting. Matthew, huh? Is that Genesis? 22.1 as the temp Ma Matthew 21.12 Matthew 21.12 On the very spot that David's standing 
is the spot probably where Abraham and Isaac stood. It's the spot where his son's going to build the temple. Where Satan and Jesus shows up, Matthew 21, verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God. Where is that? That's right where David is. That's right where Solomon was. That temple's in the same spot where Abraham brought Isaac. Isn't it? Wow, look how great it is. Look how wonderful this, this spot is. This spot is not only purchased by David, which we'll study later, later, but this is not only smart where the angel of the Lord met David, you better make an altar. I guarantee that altar that David built is right where the holy place is. Most holy. I guarantee. With scripture, with scripture that I can't get, I'd be a full, full surety uh, within, a, within a quarter. The U.S. quarter measurement would be where the most holy place would be. Here is Jesus walking into that same temple. Matthew 23, 35. And it's going to be destroyed in 70 AD, the temple that Jesus walks in. Look at this one. Matthew 23, 35. That upon you may come the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. That's quite interesting. Unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barachias, whom ye slew be to, between the temple and the altar. There was a slain of blood of Zacharias upon right where David is right now. And David offered up a sacrifice that the killing of, of the angel would re refrain from killing the entire city of Jerusalem. David saved the, the inhabitants of Jerusalem by all, by buying that land and putting an altar. That angel put that, that sword in his sleep. And is it possible? Is it possible? Is it possible? And I'm not going to say 100%, but by that verse, is it possible that maybe Abel died in the very same spot? That both their names mentioned? I'm not going to, because I have no scripture to prove that, but it's interesting how Abel is mentioned. And Abel's blood was shed after an altar sur surface, after when one guy brought the fruit stand and one guy brought the blood, the lamb. I'm not going to have to have God show us that. I'm not, but I'm just saying, that causes for a little interest. Matthew 27, 51. Matthew 27, 51. There's been bloodshed. On that temple mount. That temple has been closed and open. Closed and open. The gold has been stripped off the doors. There was a king who says, I want you to fix this. And they didn't fix it. And then he got himself a little chest and put a hole in it. And put it right by with the brazen altars. And people brought money. Matthew 27, 35. And they crucified him. And parted his garments and cast in lots that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments amongst them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Now that's Jesus Christ being crucified. Oh, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong spot. Matthew 2751. Excuse me. Matthew 2751. I'm in the wrong spot. All right. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and from the and from the earth did quake, and the rocks went rent. That's definitely where Solomon built that temple. That is the holy place and the most holy place. That veil that separated between the two. Jesus Christ went in there. God went in there. <clears throat> kind of kicked the devil's butt in Matthew 4, didn't he? And look, hey, you want me to fall down and worship you? Hey, Satan, watch it. <clears throat> I'll just rip it from the top to the bottom. That's where Psalm is going to put the door between the, his holy place and his most holy place. That's going to be the place where David is right now to purchase, purchase that property and to offer an altar to the angel of the Lord and to God. So he'll put away his sheep and won't destroy. This is probably the spot where Abraham and Isaac were. 
and Jesus Christ upon his death. No one was in to go in there but the high priest. Twice and once in a day of the year. Now no more high priest can go in there. We have the great high priest according to Hebrews. And he goes right in through that place. Upon his death. He entered the temple alive. Walked in there, walked out. Walked in, walked out. Right now, he's entered that temple dead. How's that for a sacrifice? How's that for a spot? David would never have known that. Solomon would have no idea. Abraham Isaac would have no idea. And here we are. Satan didn't even have an idea. I can almost say, Jesus, to you, Satan, I've got the victory. Now give me the keys of death and hell. There it is. Uh, 2751, that's that one. All right, John chapter 2, verse 14. Jesus Christ entered in a place where no man but one man was to enter. And he didn't get leprosy. Right, as soon as I said that, the king's name went out of my mouth. John chapter 2, verse 14. And he found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the exchangers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money all through the tables. What would Jesus do? This is the place where David bought oxen. He bought the land. And they turned that oxen and the threshing instruments into a fire and offered to God. And the angel of the Lord was appeased. He did. He told on and he says, listen, no, you can't give it to me. If I'm going to do it for God, I've got to buy it. You know what they're doing right here? Man, they're suckering the people. They're selling those birds for outrageous right. They're saying, hey, we'll take your Roman coins and we'll give you nothing for a temple coin. Because you couldn't go into the temple with the Roman coins because it had an image. And Jews don't worship an image. You had to go in there with a temple coin and you were not getting fooled. They are deceiving the people. David didn't deceive the people. Remember what David did? He says, I have sinned. I have greatly sinned. Lord God, your sheep, do it to me in my household. David purchased that land. David builds that altar. The angel of the Lord puts that, that sword back in the sheep, and the people are pleased, and look where we are now. Jesus walks into that temple, and he's kicking tables over. He's knocking things over. He's whipping them with a cord. He says, get your CDs out of here. Get your VDs out of here. Get your money out of here. Get your cassette tapes out of here. Get those Bibles out of here. Get that merchandise out of my room. I don't want no bazaars. I don't want no yard sales. I don't want no tag sales. I don't want no cake sales. I don't want no baloney in my temple. Same place that Solomon would be. The same place where David would be. And the same place where Abraham, Isaac is, well, has been, and look what they're doing. They're shortchanging the people. And David goes in there and knocks it all over. I mean, Jesus goes in, knocks it all over. And then one last place, John 7, 14. And the footsteps of Jesus in that temple could be the footsteps of Solomon. Could be the footsteps of David. Could be the footsteps of Abraham and Isaac. Can you imagine that, that moment? Gee, I, I don't know. I am. I'm going out on a limb here, and if, if I'm wrong, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. But can you just imagine maybe one moment that Jesus had a moment of silence with himself and then say, "Oh, I remember that day I met David here when I had that sword in my. I'm killing. I, that's right where David was. That's exactly where David was." When him and I met on this place right here. And how dare those fools deceive my people? How dare they have that cow walk and poop in the air on that floor? You know, they were, you know, build the, te build the temple and tear it down three days, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is just crime. He said he's going to tear down the, uh, down the temple. And, well, you got cows and, and bird poop all over the place. In the temple. It said, in the temple, we read. And can you just imagine that moment that Jesus sat there and said, I remember that afternoon when, when Abraham brought Isaac. And I spoke to Isaac. He said, don't do it. 
I know you love your son. Because you you have not withheld your only son. And probably looked up to heaven and say, Father, that's I'm your lamb. I'm the one that Abraham said, God shall provide himself a lamb. Here I am. Can't believe this mess, but this is the very spot where I met Solomon. Wouldn't it be interesting if that was the case? And last place, 714, John 714. And about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. Is that temple? I know it's Herod's temple. I know it, it's almost Ezra and Nehemiah's temple. I know Solomon's temple is gone. I know there was no temple with David. I know there was no temple in Abraham and Isaac, but there's that piece of ground. And that piece of ground today is being defiled by that dump of the rock. You think God's happy? You think God's happy with the Jewish people, how they rejected him? Where they stand today? They can't bring their sacrifices. There's no more temple there. you got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. So back to 1 Chronicles 21.18 to, to, to finish. We only did one verse today. Then the angel of the Lord, that's Jesus Christ. That's the one that kicked over the tables. That's the one that walked in there and tempted the people. That's the one where the blind man fought with the Pharisees. And then the Bible says that he found Jesus in the temple, or Jesus found him in the temple. And he says, he says well, who is he? He says, you're just the one that you see now. Go and sin no more. That's the very spot. That's the angel of the Lord. That's Jesus Christ. That's the angel of the Lord told Abraham, stop. I know you love me. David, we're going to read we're going to read more, Lord willing. Solomon, this is the plans your father's given you. Then the angel of the Lord commanded commanded Gad, it had to be. Gad to say to David that David should go up. You gotta go up. How many times are you read in the Bible with Jesus? They went up to Jerusalem. There it is. It's a mountain. They went up. There it is. And set up an altar unto the Lord. Jehovah, in the threshing floor, not, not beside the threshing floor, not above the threshing floor, not beneath the threshing floor, not to the right side, of, in the threshing floor of Ornan, that place where he had wheat is the place where God would meet with the nation of Israel. Glory to God. 